Uh, we are so delighted today to be joined by Dr. Farouk El Baz. Um, for those unfamiliar with his background, it, it would take me quite a while to um, go over his entire bio, but he played a major role in Apollo science, training the crew, setting the objectives and the mission plan for the Apollo program and all of the Apollo missions. Um, so he has an incredible wealth of experience um, in, in the topic that we are facing today, as well as the topic of integrating science into human spaceflight to the moon. Um, so we're we're so thrilled to be joined by him today. Um, and Dr. Elbaz, we can turn it over to you. But I'm delighted to talk to you guys. And uh, <clears throat> it is something to, uh, to uh, remember about the fact that the Apollo astronauts, particularly those who remained in orbit, have added a great deal to our scientific knowledge of the moon. So that's an important statement, that much of our understanding of the whole moon came from the observations that were made by the guys while in orbit, not just from collection of the material on the surface, but from what they observed and what, how they <clears throat> described what they see from surface, from orbit. So it is really something that is inherent on the fact that as we explore, we enjoy seeing things. And we as we explore, we like to talk about things or describe what we see. And that's that's indeed one of the things that uh, I have been very heavily involved with and delighted with my involvement with them, with the astronauts. And in every single case, we were able to in, in, uh, increase the information that was gathered on the surface by many fold. So that the statements made by astronauts from orbit have increased our knowledge of the moon of the whole moon many fold actually i'll just give you one example of the fact that uh, on apollo 15 al warden was looking at the ground from orbit and describing what he saw and he started talking about some cinder cones very much like the cinder cones near Flagstaff, Arizona, and these are different from the surrounding such and such. Ta, ta, ta. Rocco Petron, the Apollo program director, who was at the in the uh, mission control center at the time, came down from way up there where he sat, down to where I was down standing with the uh, uh, crew, uh, the, the flight planners. And he say he pointed me at pointed at me and he said, Hey Farouk, your student may have picked up a landing site for you. So the Apollo program director himself recognizing that these statements by Al Warden about such and such a place were so damned important in lunar science and in lunar geology, that might be that place should be considered for a landing site on a later mission. And that Apollo 17 site was in exactly where Apollo 15 observed cinder cones and the lunar <laughs> surface. So the observations of a trained astronaut can be fabulously important from the scientific point of view. And a trained astronaut can become only by looking at things and observing what they are and describing what they are, which you can do from your, your aircraft window. You can look from an aircraft window or the, where you're flying or moving around from Houston to the Cape and vice versa, and look at that on the ground, the ground, and see what is there, and try to describe it to yourself even, and see what is what is the difference between this and the area around Houston, or what's the, what's the difference in the vegetation or the color or top. So the, the kinds of things that you can pick and the kinds of things that you can describe, you don't know the, the importance of these items and the importance of all of these descriptions to the scientific community. So observations from lunar robot are very important, very significant, and they can certainly tell us a lot more about the lunar surface than the photographs can. Of course, naturally, we need the photographs because it is the features that we are talking about, whether they're their, their color is different or not, but the, and their relationship are what? So the features we know from the photographs, but we don't know the nature of the place and the potential way of the way it has it was has become this way from visual observation. 
difference in color, difference in structure, difference in texture, and why is it this way? Why is it tilted this way or that way? So the visual observations from orbit around the moon can be of great significance to our lunar science. And therefore, I really am delighted that you're thinking about doing some more of that training and to, to prepare yourself to make the observations that can provide us scientists a great deal of information. Many thanks. Thank you very much.